Thank you, everyone, for being here. Welcome today. In 1986, Massimo Bottura bought a roadside trattoria. He had no culinary training and no experience. Despite this, the restaurant, which served traditional Emilian dishes, was a great success. In 1993, Alain Ducasse visited the trattoria and invited Massimo to cook at Hotel de Paris in Monte Carlo. After this life-changing experience, imagine going from a trattoria to a three Michelin star restaurant. He opened a new restaurant, Osteria Francescana, in Modena's historic center. He was no longer cooking traditional recipes, but provocative Italian renditions, which were received with skepticism and doubt. In fact, it took 10 years from receiving his first Michelin star in 2001 to receiving his third star, Michelin's highest rating in 2012. Why? Because in Italy, the idea of tradition and evolution is not easy for anyone to accept. Today, the restaurant is rated the best in Italy, and for the second consecutive year, Osteria Francescana ranked third in San Pellegrino's list of the th world's 50 best restaurants. Massimo's food blends tradition with innovation, managing to capture the essence of classic Italian dishes via modern expressions. One of the ways he achieves this is by marrying his passion for food with his love of contemporary art. He is also known for the playful names he gives his dishes, like his signature dish, oops, I dropped the lemon tart. Earlier this week on Jimmy Kimmel, he, he made and fed Jimmy his iconic recipe, memory of a mortadella sandwich. We have a three minute video to show you now of Massimo and his restaurant in Modena, Italy. I'm born and I grew up in the land of uh, fast car and uh, slow food. I learned since I was a kid to think very quick. As the Roman, they were saying, Think quick, do it very quick, but slowly. La linea qua, poi spari qua. That means have a very quick thought, but do it slowly because uh, you need a lot of time to do something. They interpret what I'm thinking, and they know what I'm thinking. So here we go. Oops, uh, we dropped the lemon tart. Food for Italians is like, you know, the soccer team, or the Pope, or the food. In order, soccer team first, Pope second, tradition third. I remember all these gastronomic trips I took with my older brothers, because my mom was pushing me, go, 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 don't just play soccer, because I was playing soccer every day. I, I think, think uh, those kind of experiences, they were totally important part of my life because going on Mont Saint Michel or Angelo Gaia visiting the wine cellar. Drive to Nice, eat oyster, get drunk, going back for the night. And say, Mom, but Massimo, where have you been? Uh, studying. Tre classici, marcia! How can I forget about the taste of lasagna? It's impossible of a piece of Parmigiano or Confirm. A drop of 50 years old balsamic vinegar. That's magic. So what we have to do is just uh, see everything from the distance, see what's wrong and what's right, and bring uh, just the best part into the future. The book is gonna be about uh, my passion, the evolution of my ideas, food, but also art and music. Maybe as I always said, through passion, I'm going to transfer emotions. Maybe the, the book uh, at the end is going to be about emo emotion. I don't know. I hope so. Get deep into things is one of the most important things. I hope uh, people, they're going to read how is the structure of creativity and uh, they're going to be inspired by this structure. Express yourself. That's the point. Feel free. Be brave. I always say to the young chef, be focused on what is your dream. You can realize that. That's the scary part. <laughs>
I'm Massimo Bottura, I'm an Italian chef and uh, I, I grew up in Modena, Modena in the middle of Emilia Romagna, is in the center of, uh, of Italy, so is where the, the Ferrari car, the Maserati, Lamborghini, Ducati are made, but also Parmigiano Reggiano, balsamic vinegar. So it's like, it's the land of, uh, as I said, of uh, slow food and fast car. Um, I grew up uh, in a very large family um, in which, uh, you know, my older brother, they were like chasing me all the time because I was the younger one. And uh, my safety place was uh, uh, the kitchen where my grandmother was rolling pasta. And, uh, you know, I could uh, sneak under the table and uh, she was defending me with the mattarello, rolling the pasta, say, get out of here. You know, you're like, just because he's the younger one and the, you know, get out. So in the meantime, I was stealing a tortellini because from, uh, from up and, uh, you know, I was, for me, that's why tortellini are the, the most important uh, and the, the most, um, you know, iconic dish of my life. And especially when they are raw because you can feel exactly the flavor of the filling. The, my father was planning for me to be a lawyer. Can you imagine? <laughs> and uh, so after two years of uh, my you know, studies, I dropped everything. And um, because my passion were like food, art, and music. And uh, after the blue, we found out that uh, there was a small trattoria outside of Modena called Trattoria del Campazzo. I don't even know where, I don't even knew where it was, you know, a small village with three houses and a, a, a small restaurant in the middle. You know, uh, my brother took me there and said, this is the perfect place for you. You know, it's, uh, it's the place where you can express yourself through the food, through your passion. So, Paolo, what do you think is, are you, are you sure? I said, yes, this is the perfect place. One week later, I was there, you know, because uh, the food world chose me. It's not that I choose that. That was the perfect timing. And, uh, you know, in that moment, I, I realized I had to put all myself into this world because I have to show everyone <laughs> that was so, in, so right, the choice I made. And, uh, you know, the, the simplest um, interest for food, step by step, became a passion. And through the passion, I realized you can transfer emotions. That's what's, uh, what I think food is, and uh, how I interpret the food. Just transfer emotions. Um, I, I cook in uh, Trattoria del Campazzo for come seven years, since once uh, a great chef from France, Alain Ducasse, came and, in, and me, met me. He invited me to work at uh, Hotel de Paris in Monte Carlo. So I went there, I left everything, I went there and I started learning, working like 16 hours a, a, hour a day, so to learn everything from chocolate to bread, baking, everything. Um, since uh, they called me that uh, Trattoria del Campazzo, the club, you know, Massimo, you need, we need you. You have to come back. So uh, I left. I have to go back to my real life. That was a dream, a bubble, you know. And, uh, you know, the, in the moment I was leaving uh, Monte Carlo, I met uh, Monsieur Ducasse in, uh, in the hall of the hotel. And uh, he was asking me, the, you know, so Massimo, what, uh, did, you, did you have a good experience? You know, the classic question said, fantastic, look at this. I have the whole notebook full of everything, also recipes that I stolen from there. So and he, said, he, look at, he looked at me very carefully. He grabbed the notebook and he crashed in the middle and he threw in the garbage saying, you are ready to stand up with your feet. Just walk. I was like in shock. 
I was like, like all these months, all these hours, you know, the sweating and the, the experience, everything in the garbage. But that was the most important experience of my life. The moment that changed my life. Because, you know, I, in that moment, in that exact moment, I felt I had to do and I had to express myself, you know, through what I've learned in all this uh, month. One year later, we opened uh, Osteria Francescana. And, uh, but everything changed because of the experience in New York, in Monte Carlo. So those recipes, they were so uh, successful in, uh, in Campazzo, in the middle of the country, they couldn't match with uh, the Osteria Francescana because my mind was already changed. And I started thinking about tradition, but in evolution. I was looking at the terroir in a different way. A big wheel of Parmigiano was no more a cheese to eat, but was something much more deep. A drop of balsamic vinegar was something that I had to respect in a, and see in a different way. Maybe from under the table, I don't know. And, uh, you know, like that, that uh, I start with uh, my wife, uh, have this dialogue with, uh, with art. And uh, art uh, usually is the, the highest expression of a human being and uh, makes visible the invisible. So starting from there, compressing all these ideas, we started creating edible bites where culture became our motivational force. So in a few years later, uh, I had the opportunity to meet Ferran Adria, this Spanish chef who was creating uh, in his restaurant Bulli a revolution on uh, technique. And uh, uh, he invited me there too. Uh, so I left everything another time and I went to El Bulli to learn. And to learn, and I was thinking to learn uh, all this technique that, you know, they could make me uh, maybe create a foam of Parmigiano Reggiano, I don't know. And, uh, but actually, what Ferran was teaching me was freedom. Freedom to express yourself. The freedom of thinking and, and look inside you and bring out uh, all these memories, ideas, um, through technique, but uh, creative gestures. I came back from uh, the experience at El Bulli and uh, all these gastronomic critics in Italy, can you imagine? You know, in Italy, like, if you, you don't have to touch three things, the Pope, the national soccer team, and the grandmother recipes. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, but not these three things. So I was like, oh my God, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. But these gastronomic critics uh, and, and the chefs, they were playing jokes. Oh, what he's gonna do, Bottura is gonna make like mortadella foam. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's a beautiful idea. So I'm gonna make a mortadella foam. Why? In honor of my mother, that she was the one who pushed me to be and to follow my passion through the kitchen. And uh, she was like, since I was 14, she was bringing a, a sandwich, a bologna sandwich. Are you calling mortadella bologna right here? So bologna sandwich, that's Bologna, from Bologna. Uh, in, in a backpack, uh, you know, saying, Massimo Mangia, you have to eat, you have to eat. You know, you have to, if you want to grow, not just playing soccer. And, uh, you know, uh, for that reason, we real, uh, I just, uh, you know, start thinking about those kind of things that are icons for us, but uh, trying to not to see and to look at them in a nostalgic way, but in a critic way, to bring the best from the past into the future. So uh, one recipe from another, you know, start getting so, <laughs> so irreverent, so ironic. So all these, I was creating all these uh, plate that were like provocate people, provocate the mind, but just to attract the point of view, like tortellini are walking on the broth, serving six tortellini. Can you imagine in Modena serving six tortellini in the middle of the broth? They were like, 
what the hell is going to do, and what they think is... Or like a compression of past and beings. In compression of past and beings, I was just thinking about creating a, a, my gastronomic life, a compress my gastronomic life into a, 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 a small glass serving past and beans, one of the most classic recipes of Italian gastronomy. But in the compression of past and beans, I create this uh, uh, stratification process in a small glass, where at the bottom there was like my experience of, uh, in, uh, with a French cuisine, so with, uh, and I was, uh, uh, create this uh, creme royale, so you know the French, no? Creme royale. So they were adding a little bit of foie gras, it's like Pulp Fiction, no? Royale with cheese. It's just a cheese burger, okay? So uh, pig skin, uh, beans, and, and foie gras, and I create this uh, creme royale at the bottom. Then um, some brunoise of uh, red radicchio, so a little bit of bitterness, saute with red wine, so acidity. Then a uh, uh, creamy sauce of uh, beans, as a very traditional style. And uh, ending with uh, the um, form of uh, very um, air of rosemary, because rosemary is very intense and very uh, aggressive. So creating an air of rosemary, you have just uh, the little touch in the back pa part of the palate of the flavor of rosemary. So uh, the first homage was for Ducasse and the, the last one was uh, for Ferran Adria, my first and my last gastronomic experience. But in the middle, instead of serving pasta, I, I introduce Parmigiano-Reggiano crust, boil into the beans, as my grandmother was saying, you know, because that's a, a secret, you know, that the, every grandmother knows. And, um, and, uh, but uh, I slice the crust of Parmigiano as they were pasta. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, maltagliati, like bad cuts, so between uh, uh, Ducasse and Ferran Adria, I put my grandmother. That's the idea of the pasta and beans. And, uh, and, and uh, after you know, all these years and all this uh, experience, what I, we realized that uh, we were creating a very interesting cuisine because everyone was looking at us, and especially the Michelin Guide. And, uh, you know, we arrive uh, at one point uh, in which uh, we start getting all these awards and things, but uh, people, they were, you know, keep ask, uh, tell, uh, g giving us a space in which we, we had like this, mm, in, with this point, uh, this critic point uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of my, of our, you know, uh, creativity. And, uh, uh, at, that, at, at that point, uh, the art, the dialogue with art, start getting more deep and deep. And uh, we start creating plate as they were like, more emotional than uh, just traditional, as, um, as we, we are explaining in the book. So uh, we create plate uh, that uh, um, they start dialogue with yourself, with, with, my, with, my, with my mind, with your, the approach with, uh, with the people, like, oops, I dropped the lemon tart. Oops, I dropped the lemon tart. Or 1,000 uh, leaves of leaves means, uh, you know, in a word like this, full of obsession. Obsession and obligation in which you have, uh, you know, every day, I have to go here, I have to go there, I have to, you know, the, the lawyer and the accountant and the bank, I have to pay the bills. You know, if you don't leave a, a little space open for poetry, you know, th this life is going to disappear like this. And, uh, you know, if, if you see that moment, you know, and you realize that those moments are the moments, the most important moments in which you can jump and feel the poetry inside you, is it's uh, is the moment in which uh, you know you are in the middle of a service. You are you have uh, your pastry chef that is ready to serve uh, two lemon tart, and uh, is a Japanese guy, the most precise guys in the world, and the most uh, incredible talented, you know. And he drop one of the two lemon tart, and he's like ready to kill himself, and he's like, what what the hell, what's going on? I said Taka. It's the most beautiful tart you can serve. It's the imperfection, 
because you're so perfect that you create something imperfect that I love. And, and that's the, the moment, you know, in which you, we jump into the poetry and we imagine and we see the world from another point of view, from under the table. And uh, in that moment, we create Oops, I Dropped the Lemon Tart that became an icon of the international cuisine. So, <laughs> what, is, uh, what is the book? The book uh, is the compression of 20 years, 20 years of our work. The compression of our passion, the art, the music, the, the food. It's um, a storytelling. It's uh, every recipe is a story. It's more a book about creativity. It's more a book about, you know, uh, memory. Uh, what is uh, the, the Italy in a very deep way? Look at the at the fog of, of foggy porch of Bologna or the wind of Pantelleria that is like giving this feeling of salty capers naturally in the middle of the sea. The, the magic flavor of an almond of Noto or like the anchovies water from uh, the Gulf of Sorrento. So it's about that. It's about emotion and uh, it's about the old life that I dedicate with my wife, with my team, that I never forget about the team, that uh, uh, to, to, to create and to give uh, to, to everyone, to the young chef, the opportunity to imagine and to dream about the future. Thank you very much. Uh, you're gonna taste, uh, we, got, we brought some balsamic vinegar and some parmigiano. So it's like my, my, my blood in the vein <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, th the, the cheese that made my muscle uh, like that. So I'm not that skinny, right? So, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so it, just to say it's like this vinegar and I'm very proud of, uh, just won the gold medal in Spilamberto as the best vinegar in the world. So. It's very important for us that everyone thinks that we are so avant-garde, but it's not true. We have, we have uh, the feet very deep into tradition, and we really care about that. And uh, you know, this is the expression of what we are through Parmigianos, but family building. If you think about, you know, we grew up as a, as kids listening to the sound of the pipes of the Ferrari of the Maserati. But uh, at the end, uh, the, in, the, in, a, in, a, in a dark uh, uh, part of the house, you know, where the, when uh, the, 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 the winter hits very heavy or like the summer is getting boiling the most, you know, there's balsamic vinegar that stay there for decades and uh, became, uh, after years and years and years, a liquid gold. This is. Uh, this is crazy, you know, for 2014, thinking about that, you know, you create a product that takes like 25 years before it tastes. <laughs> but I just brought to, to share with you this kind of emotion. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Massimo. We have time for um, five, 10 minutes of questions. If anyone has a question know. they'd like to ask while we're doing the tasting. If there's one American chef you could work for, who would it be? I can work for? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a, this is a you, something that- Who would you stash with? I never work for anyone, no. you know. I work for Ray Costantini in New York when it was 1993, where I met my wife, Lara, and uh, it was Cafe di Nonna. He was a Calabrian guy that, you know, hairdresser, and, uh, you know, he was giving party to his house, and, uh, Everyone will say, oh, Ray, you're so good on cooking. You just have to open a restaurant. It was like, when I met him, he was sleeping in the basement. After like the first month of opening, he didn't know anything about food, anything about the restaurant. He was so tired that he was like sleeping in the basement. Was, I work for him. Nice. <laughs> and the second question is, um, <laughs> hypothetically, it's 12 a.m. Uh, you had a couple glasses of wine. What are you going to cook for yourself? 12 a.m. Glass of wine. What, what glass of wine? Uh, Barolo. Red. Oh, okay. Barolo. 
what I've cooked for myself. Actually, a glass of Barolo at midnight mm -hmm. can be by itself. You know? <laughs> no, because it's like, it's like you know, Barolo is manze bevi. You yeah. eat and you drink because it's so complex that uh, when you feel a Barolo, you just, uh, you have in the nose, you have red fruit, you have uh, uh, toasted almond, you have uh, the old earth, also truffle sometimes. Uh, and uh, it's so complex that, you know, choose something at midnight like that is tricky question. <laughs> um, no, I don't know, something, maybe a culatello, like a slice of culatello, very old. You chew the same feeling, like uh, porcini mushroom, black truffle. What, what would you eat for street food? If, street if, food if, if is, I love street food. And, and actually, actually um, in two days, I'm going to cook street food too. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going in New York and uh, I create a burger for uh, Shake Shack oh, and nice for Columbus, uh, Columbus Day. And uh, it's going to be a burger in which uh, I, mix, <laughs> I mix some uh, beef with cotechino. Are you familiar with cotechino? Cotechino is a sausage, very traditional, created uh, 500 years ago in Mirandola, a small village outside of Modena. And uh, it's just... Uh, pig ground with also the skin part that you cook and, and you defat it and uh, you, but it's very gelatinous and it's incredible when uh, it's not uh, when there is no f fat because uh, you feel the gelatin everywhere and uh, so I ground uh, this meat I, I cook it and I mix it with uh, uh, the gelatin with uh, the beef and uh, some uh, parmigiano reggiano so like 30% 20% of cotechino 70% uh, of meat and 10% of parmigiano reggiano. So it's the perfect umami with the gelatin inside. And salsa verde, as uh, Emilia Romagna, we serve with, uh, with close to the meat, with acidity, the chlorophyll of the, the, the salad. So imagine these kind of things. And the mayonnaise made with the balsamic vinegar for the fried fries, you know? Yeah, that's Michelin star quality street food. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. The point, the point is, uh, the point is that everyone is tweeting that, and every single website is like talking, ah, Columbus Day, everyone at Madison Park. So can you imagine what's going on in oh, Madison Park? You know, you know. I'm, I'm just last night I was sleeping and I wake up like that. I say, three thousand people there waiting for the burger. <laughs> what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about. Uh, criticism and uh, I know Italians are very outspoken in their criticism and you kind of really I didn't know that <laughs> it, it's new it's new uh. Uh, but you sort of went away from tradition you you almost shocked a, a culture how do you deal with the criticism on a daily basis in the restaurant outside of the restaurant you know yesterday and uh, the most important guide uh, espresso guide from uh, from, uh, from Italy, it's like 37 years of history, you know, uh, came out for the fifth time, sixth time, uh, I'm uh, like best chef, uh, uh, best restaurant in Italy. And, uh, and instead of saying, ah, oh, great, it's beautiful, like, what a restaurant we have, it's like, oh, what a boring, it's always him, you know, it's like, you know, that's what I'm supposed to say, say thank you, or what I have to do. Um, uh, you know, it's like still now, after everything, you know, there are people that are coming in with the five different age of Parmigiano Reggiano in five different texture and temperature, you know, the, an iconic dish that you, you see in the, you have the recipe in the, in the book. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, it was creating 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, evo after Evolve in 98, the aging process, and 2002, in 2011, uh, it has been declared the plate of the decade for Italian gastronomy. So it's like an incredible honor, you know. Uh, like two weeks ago, there was a customer who said, yeah, it's good, but you know, I would put something like that, and I would change this, and I say, "Oh, that's a good idea." I'm, I'm gonna take notes, and you know, I'm gonna think about that. <laughs> what, what do you have to say? You know, it's it's normal in Italy for me. I'm I'm uh, I'm used to, so there's no problem. You know, 15 years ago, I risk to get uh, burned into the main piazza uh, as a witch. You know, 
So, <laughs> so. We're going to take two more. Yes, I had a question on how you made your vinegar so fruitful and sour on that perfect blend. It's a just a uh, question. It's just a, a, a way of uh, waiting, you know? Choose the right barrels, choose the right woods, uh, make the perfect mosto, the must, you know, the reduction of the, 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 the grape juice, and then uh, wait. And then trust your palate, you know? Every single wood is giving you something, okay? It's talking to you. Like, you have a juniper, and uh, it's telling you that you're gonna have uh, incense, chocolate, coffee. You have uh, cherry wood. You're gonna have sour cherry, fresh red fruit, a little bit of plums. You have uh, oak. You have, you know, it's telling you something. So what I did, I, I just uh, follow my ideas and my palate. I move uh, the different barrels. And, uh, you know, instead of having the juniper, as everyone has at the end of the, all, all these barrels, I move uh, the juniper in the middle and the cherry at the end. So I got this fresh and balanced flavor that uh, is just, uh, to me, is just perfect like that. And, you know, uh, I got the gold medal, so they have to stay. <laughs> so it's a blind tasting, so <laughs> no one can say anything. What do you cook for your family? Uh, I, I never cook. <laughs> no, we, have, we, have, uh, we are very lucky that uh, we have the opportunity to, to have incredible ingredients. And uh, another thing that uh, my wife, uh, she's from New York, so she, came, she arrived in Modern, and the first thing she, de she did, she went to my mom and learned how to make ragu, how to make passatelli. So uh, uh, she's, she's very good on cooking, and uh, she's the one who cooks for the children from the family. Or, but also ingredients, you know. When you, have a, when you have a great ingredient, like the perfect burrata or the mozzarella that when you break it, all the milk is coming out and, you know, it's amazing. Or like a ham or these uh, in sweet anchovies, you know, put together everything. <laughs> Please join me one more time in thanking Massimo for joining no, us here. Yeah.